Well, if you dig deeper into the big pandemic bill and spending package passed late last year, you'll see an unusual demand. Yes, U.S. intelligence agencies have less than six months to tell Congress what they know about unidentified aerial phenomena. Go ahead, Dale. Sorry. Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I was going to say, if we're being real, I mean, uh, we had just an insane year last year, I think, where everything that could happen happened. Uh, the only thing missing from the slate here is an alien right. invasion. Yep. I don't know what else happened. Then the discovery was an accident. Dave both Science Pro is here to explain all of this for us. This is a strange one, huh? This is a strange one. Antarctica, a continent that has captured our imagination for centuries, this land of extremes is famous for keeping its secrets. A British team of scientists has unraveled a new one. And the scientists who bored a hole through an Antarctic ice shelf have discovered new species living in total darkness in the seabed. But the British Atlantic Survey's accidental discovery of sea life has challenged our understanding of Antarctica. One of the study's authors said he never expected to find such creatures living so far from the daylight. And they found little sponges as well on this rock, and they were just dumbfounded. Because how, how could this survive? It's 160 miles away from an open ocean where it could achieve any light at all. Again, it's thousands of feet down. It's probably 4,500 to 5,000 feet down. They found bacteria, sponges, and animals with a stork-like head, which could be a form of predator known as a hydroid. For the first time, the giant squid was captured on video in U.S. waters. This happened in the Gulf of Mexico. The tremor has jolted Japan just weeks from the 10-year anniversary of the Fukushima earthquake disaster. Scientists have described it as an aftershock almost a decade in the making. The strong overnight quake as it hit northeastern Japan off the coast of Fukushima. The initial quake was followed by a series of aftershocks. Hey, hold on. Seven point three magnitude earthquake rippling across Japan. The shaking so violent it cut power to a million households. Started fires and set off sprinkler systems flooding this train station. More than a hundred people were injured, most at home as items not bolted down, rattled and fell. The earthquake's epicentre was just 70 kilometres off the Fukushima coastline. The tremors felt in Tokyo and even further south. It hit almost 10 years to the day since the devastating 9.0 magnitude quake. As residents began cleaning up the aftermath, officials are calling on people to remain on the alert for further aftershocks in the coming weeks. West Africa is facing a resurgence of Ebola, the first since the end of a 2016 outbreak which killed more than 11,000 people. Now back then, the epidemic began in Guinea, and now that same country has recorded seven new confirmed cases. The new cases are in the Nizirokar region, the same place where Guinea's last epidemic started. For health authorities, it is for now a race against time to trace and isolate contact cases before it's too late. The United States is working closely with several African countries at risk in a new Ebola outbreak happening in Central and West Africa. With COVID concern taking over day-to-day -day life, should we be concerned about another potential pandemic? Toronto is caught up with Maryland's UFO Network for their take on this upcoming report. Mark Gershny remembers his first sighting like it was yesterday. I looked up at the sun and right under the sun was a black UFO. It was the standard saucer shape with a little dome on the top. It happened while he was with his son. He couldn't see it, but I could see it as clearly as the nose on your face. Since then, he's had multiple sightings. 
I've seen UFOs right here on the corner by my house. I've seen the kind that just seems like a ball of molten metal, glowing white plasma ball that just, you know, gently floated overhead and then passed through the trees. My wife and I both saw that. He's now the president of Maryland's chapter of the Mutual UFO Network, also known as MUFON investigating sightings in the state. Maryland has seen 11 cases already this year. And soon, Mark's belief in UFOs could be corroborated. As part of the COVID-19 relief and spending bill, intelligence agencies have less than six months to tell Congress what they know about UFOs. If it's something of, uh, outside, outside this planet, that might actually be better than the fact that we've seen some technological leap on behalf of the Chinese or the Russians or some other adversaries. report will shed light on what may loom in our universe. I think it's good though for the country and I think it's good for a civilization as we evolve to understand what's really going on out there. to Elk Grove for at least four months now. Did you hear that? Neighbors have been reporting loud booms at night. Keep in mind, police have made multiple arrests, but another explosion happened today near a church. A flash of light in the sky, followed by a ground-shaking boom. This video was taken in October, one of the first complaints of explosions that have rocked Elk Grove for months. Happens, I mean, like once a month now. Just Singh, who lives behind the Calvary Christian Center, says it always happens after midnight. On Monday, he heard it again. It is the loudest one like we ever heard. He says it seemed to wake the entire neighborhood. The Elk Grove Police Department says investigators found evidence of the explosion in the area and are working to determine what caused it and who's responsible. The explosion's an ongoing problem keeping the department busy despite numerous arrests. Alrighty, well, getting... Alright, let's prepare ourselves for this. Yeah. Call. While getting ready for his live shot this morning, our Dylan Kendrick looked up and gasped. Gasped, we say. He saw a string of strange lights zipping across the valley sky. He's not the only one. So what was it? Do we need to like call the men in black or something? Let's bring in Dylan. Dylan, what did you see? What we saw, uh, my photographer Luis and I were just talking in between that live shot uh, that we brought to you at the five o'clock hour, looked up and just saw at least 20 or 30 uh, lights just kind of coming into a place. So there was a dark sky, nothing, and then these like bright lights just started coming out and uh, just moving uh, about uh, in a southeasterly direction. Uh, one of the strangest things I've seen, like I said, uh, at this point they're unidentified. UFOs don't associate all the time with aliens, but uh, at this point I, I just, I've never seen anything like it. Folks are reaching out to me on Twitter for my video. Uh, it was spotted out in California, which tells us these aren't airplanes, they're not drones, but uh, wow guys, I mean, you guys can chime in. You've seen the video too. Just let yeah. everyone know at home, I'm not crazy. weeks away from the 24th anniversary of the Phoenix Lights in the Sky. That strange sight has led to ongoing mystery and intrigue about unidentified flying objects. And now there's been another UFO sighting involving an American Airlines crew that was flying to Phoenix. The American Airlines pilot of flight 2292 radioed in at 1 p.m. Central Time reporting an object flying right on top of them. What did he see? And then, yeah, I'd be interested to know. It couldn't have been a missile. I think I was reading it when it couldn't have been, but I don't know. Close to Roswell this happened, so you never know when you get close to Roswell what might be up there. Uh, and this comes uh, just a year after the Pentagon released three videos of unidentified flying objects. You may know them as UFOs, recorded by Navy fighter pilots. It also comes in the same year as an astronomer at Harvard named Avi Loeb says, affirmatively, aliens have visited. It's not kidding. So the FBI got back to me today. They say they are uh, aware of the reported incident, but it is their policy not to confirm nor deny any of their investigations, which, of course, only makes this all that much more mysterious.
My message is entitled, When the End Comes, Where Will You Be? Now, Paul the Apostle, in exhorting the early church about these days that are now coming upon us, in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, let me just read it to you, verses 1 to 9. He says, But concerning the times and the seasons, brethren, you have no need I should write to you. For you yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so comes as a thief in the night. Now we're talking about the day of Christ's return. It, it, is, it is the day of his physical return to the earth is preceded by his coming to gather his church together unto him. It's called the rapture of the church. It's going to happen, folks. As surely as we are here this morning, in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ are going to rise first, and we who are alive and remain shall be gathered together with them. Imagine if you are outside of the Lord today, if you do not know Christ as Savior and suddenly all the rest of us disappear in the sanctuary and you are all alone. Imagine the, the lostness, the feeling of that. It, he comes as a thief in the night. For when they say peace and safety, then sudden destruction comes upon them as labor pains upon a pregnant woman and they shall not escape. But you, brethren, are not in darkness so that this day should overtake you as a thief. You are all sons of light and sons of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore, let us not sleep as others do, but let us watch and be sober. For those who sleep, sleep at night, and those who get drunk are drunk at night. But th let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and as a helmet, the hope of salvation. For God did not appoint us to wrath, but to obtain salvation through our Lord Jesus Christ. When they say peace and safety, this world will do everything it can to bring about peace, to bring about safety. There, there's coming a moment, I suppose, where the leaders of this world feel that they've actually arrived, that this euphoric moment where everybody is going to get along. Obviously, that's not happening today, Let's, uh, but they're assuming that it's going to happen in the future. You, you walk out in Manhattan and you think these buildings are always going to be here. They may not always be here. It not, things may not always look the way they are. And if you're looking just for security in the things of this world, you're going to be sadly, sadly disappointed one day. They asked him now, they said, what, what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? In other words, what, what can we look forward to? What, what will be the, the spiritual temperature? What will be happening? It was a very real question that they were asking him. He starts out by saying, take heed that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name saying, I am the Christ and will deceive many. In other words, this, this last moment of time, the devil will do everything he can to break into the house of God and break into the people of God. False messiahs will arise. Claiming, now some will claim to be Christ and sad to say some will follow them. They'll claim to be the Lord they'll, or they'll claim to have the, the words and the way to go forward in, in that context. They'll, they'll claim to be the Messiah. I, I'm here to deliver. I'm here to tell you the way into security and into the future and how you can find the pathway to the places of safety. Paul said, it's, it's Christ in you, the hope of glory in Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. In other words, there, there will be others who rise up and say, you see, if you're looking at my life, you're looking at Christ. You're looking at what Christ is, who Christ is, what Christ does. And so the false messiahs will be in pulpits all over the nation. They'll be standing up and saying, yes, I have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit's leading me, the Holy Spirit's animating me. And so if you're looking at my life, here, here's an example of who the Messiah is what the Messiah looks like, what the Messiah does. You understand, this? It's, they're, they're saying, I am a representative of Christ. Jesus said, they will come in my name, saying, I am Christ. They will come and stand and say, this is what Jesus looks like. This is what Jesus speaks. This is who Jesus is.